subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 12th of January. Omicron should not be taken lightly, warns Indian Health Ministry. Pakistan being pawned away for mere $1 billion, says opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif on mini-budget. And UN distributes winterization kits to Afghans in need. And now for all the details, Omicron should not be taken lightly despite India witnessing a low hospitalization rate, said the health ministry as the country's daily COVID-19 cases tally stood at more than 190,000 cases on Wednesday. The health ministry warned not to let the guard down and Omicron, currently dominant in India, should not be mistaken as common cold as the new variant has led to the collapse of health systems of several countries in the West. Indian Health Ministry on Wednesday warned that the Omicron variant should not be taken lightly as the rapidly spreading virus has led to the collapse of the health system of many countries in the West. Several states including Maharashtra, Delhi and West Bengal are witnessing a spike in cases with the positivity rate soaring to more than 20%. India reported 194,720 new COVID cases on Wednesday, the most since late May, Health Ministry data showed. Omicron is not common cold. This Omicron ki wajah se kai deshon ke health system collapse ho gaye. Indian health officials have said most people have shown no or only minor symptoms and have recovered quickly at home. Hence, the hospitalization has reduced considerably as compared to the second wave of the pandemic. Hospitals in many parts of the country have also ramped up their healthcare facilities with more oxygen and ICU beds. Vaccine का बहुत ही बढ़िया effect हम देख रहे हैं। इतने सारे case बढ़ने के बावजूद भी admission बहुत कम है। हमने भी सुना है, आपने भी सुना होगा कि करीबन 1.5 percent admission rate है। बाकी सारे लोग बोलेंगे कि होम आइसोलेशन में हैं और होम आइसोलेशन से एडमिशन होने का भी अभी कोई इतना इंक्रीज ट्रेंड नहीं दिख रहा है मतलब सारे लोग घर पे ठीक हो रहे हैं। विद द हिंदू फेस्टिवल ऑफ मकर संक्रांति अराउंड द कॉर्नर मार्केट्स एंड पब्लिक प्लेसेस आर फ्लडेड विद हेवी क्राउड्स फॉर फेस्टिव शॉपिंग Health experts have often expressed concerns that complacency and defying of COVID-19 protocols could lead to an overwhelmed healthcare system during the Omicron-dominant third wave. A leader of the opposition in Pakistan's National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, on Tuesday slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan's government, claiming that the country's economy was being pawned away for mere one billion U.S. dollars as he condemned the controversial mini-budget. The legislation is one of the requirements Pakistan has to meet under an IMF program that will pave the way for disbursement of a one billion U.S. dollars tranche. Leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, slammed PM Imran Khan's government, claiming that Pakistan's economy was being pawned away for mere one billion US dollars as debated on the controversial finance supplementary bill, generally known as the mini budget on Tuesday. The bill is one of the requirements Pakistan has to meet under the program agreed with the International Monetary Fund that will pave a way for disbursement of one billion dollar tranche. The government aims to raise about 343 billion rupees by withdrawing the sales tax exemptions so that all sectors pay a uniform 17%. Opposition PMLN President Shehbaz Sharif said the country's citizens don't have money to pay their children's school fees. But the ruling party was oblivious to the issues being issued by the middle class. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you this very clearly that this government will not forgive them. This government will come to the streets, 
اور ان کا ان سے حساب لے گی کہ یہ ٹیکس جو ہیں یہ کسی صورت بھی یہ ان کی برداشت سے باہر ہیں Surging food and energy prices have put Imran Khan under increasing pressure in recent months as household bills have caused growing anger among the poor and middle classes. Pakistan's consumer price index rose 12.28% in December from a year earlier. The Pakistani rupee has also depreciated about 10% over the past six months against the dollar. And locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented the government's apathy to reconstruct educational institutions that were damaged in the deadly earthquake in the illegally occupied region 16 years ago. They blamed that students are still forced to attend classes under open skies in several remote areas or drop out entirely. Locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented government's apathy to develop the education sector and reconstruct schools and other basic infrastructure damaged in the 2005 deadly earthquake in the illegally occupied region. Muhammad Altaf Bhatt, a former candidate of the local legislative assembly, said that successive governments have only made big claims, but no groundwork has been done even 16 years after the natural calamity hit the region. Students are either forced to attend classes under the open sky or drop out entirely. The people are still awaiting reconstruction, but so far it appears to be a distant dream. Uh, جو ہوتی ہے وہ ایک مانگ کی حیثیت کا درجہ رکھتی ہے تعمیر نو کے ادارے جو پیرا ہے اور ذیلی ادارے سیرا ہے ہر سال جب ہر پانچ سال بعد گورنمنٹ بدلتی ہے ایک نئی اچھی پالیسی کا بیان کرتے ہیں کہ بحالی یہ تعمیر نو کو مکمل کریں گے تعلیمی اداروں کو مکمل کریں گے اسپیٹلز کو مکمل کریں گے لیکن انتہائی کرب کے ساتھ میں کہنا پڑتا ہوں جب دوسری حکومت اقتدار منتقل ہوتا ہے کہتے ہیں فنڈ کی کمی ہے اور فلاں ہے Locals blame that repeated pleas have fallen on deaf ears over the years and that the limited education that students are receiving in the region is crowdfunded. They accuse they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. And moving on, in an effort to keep vulnerable children, mothers and families protected during the harsh winter in Afghanistan, the United Nations distributed winterization kits to displaced people living in camps in Afghanistan's Herat province earlier this month. The UN says nearly 23 million people are facing extreme levels of hunger, with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold in Afghanistan. The United Nations on Tuesday released footage showing UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, distributing so-called winterization kits to families living in camps with displaced people in Herat province of Afghanistan. The kits are part of UNICEF's emergency response to keep vulnerable children, mothers and families protected during the harsh winter in Afghanistan. The UN winterization campaign comes as US President Joe Biden's administration on Tuesday said it plans to donate an extra $308 million in humanitarian aid to Afghanistan, bringing total US aid for the impoverished country and Afghan refugees in the region to nearly $782 million US dollars since October. The United States is also providing 1 million additional coronavirus vaccine doses to Afghanistan bringing the total to 4.3 million doses, the White House said. The United Nations say nearly 23 million people, about 55% of the population, are facing extreme levels of hunger, with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold in Afghanistan. And there has been a surge in COVID-19 cases in Nepal with over 2,400 new cases reported in the last 24 hours, forcing authorities to impose restrictions as the Himalayan nation braces for a third wave of the pandemic. The government from Tuesday onwards prohibited public gatherings involving more than 25 people while schools have been closed until January 29th to stem the spread of the virus. The COVID-19 infection rate in Nepal has soared in the last 24 hours, forcing authorities to clamp restrictions as the Himalayan nation braces for the third wave of the pandemic. 
Nepal lost 2,444 new cases of coronavirus on Tuesday, taking its total confirmed cases to 8,35,927, while the death toll to 11,607. Starting Tuesday, public gatherings like political rallies and religious functions involving more than 25 people have been prohibited. The government has ordered schools to close until January 29, hoping to stem the virus spread. However, the education ministry said a campaign to vaccinate children aged 12 to 17 at their schools would go ahead. Nepal has provided two shots of COVID-19 vaccines to 37 percent of its population of 30 million since an inoculation drive began a year ago. सरकारले जुन यो निर्णय गर्न लागेको छ यो कन्ट्रोल गर्नलाई चेन ब्रेक गर्नलाई भनौँ है जुन भ्याक्सिन सरी भाइरस ट्रान्समिसनको जुन चेन ब्रेक गर्नलाई भनिएको छ त्यसको लागि चाहिँ गर्न लागेको यो चाहिँ एउटा सिफारिस छ र एक हिसाबले चाहिँ र संक्रमण रो दर चाहिँ र कम गर्नलाई राम्रो हो Last week the government asked hospitals to prepare for increased number of patients as COVID-19 cases would increase sharply Nepal experienced a devastating second wave of pandemic in May last year that plunged the country into a public health disaster. The Himalayan nation has reported 27 cases of infections with the Omicron so far, but no deaths from it. And moving on days ahead of the Makar Sankranti festival kite sellers in India's Surat city were seen gearing up to sell their colorful kites. However, traders said they are facing major losses in their business as the COVID-19 restrictions are eroding their pockets. Makar Sankranti, a festival dedicated to sun god, is celebrated across parts of India by flying kites and offering prayers to the sun god. Ahead of one of the most awaited festivals of India's western Gujarat, the Uttarayan or Makar Sankranti festival, kite traders say they are facing difficulties to sell amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The most common form of celebrating Makar Sankranti, a festival dedicated to sun god, is kite flying. From flying kites and making sweets and relishing on leaf smacking kichri, Makar Sankranti is one of the important festivals across India. In India, while most festivals follow the lunar calendar, Makar Sankranti is celebrated as per the solar calendar. That's why the public comes to 10 hours before. But the public was so much fun, the public was so much fun, so the public was so much fun, and the public was so much fun. And the public was so much fun, so the public was so much fun. The public was so much fun, so the public was so much fun. Traders are reporting a 25% cut in kite rope purchases this year compared to last year. This year, Makar Sankranti will be observed on January 14. And with the aim to create employment opportunities, two engineering students in India's Jammu and Kashmir have started a poultry farm of Indonesian black chicken breed called Ayam Simani in Srinagar city. The duo said they got inspired by Indian cricketer MS Dhoni, who also runs a similar farm on a large scale. In a bid to create employment opportunities, two engineering students in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir have started a poultry farm of Indonesian chicken black breed known as Ayam Simani or Kadaknath. This black Indonesian breed is one of the most expensive chickens in the world. The duo Nomar Rashid and Memoon Khan said they got inspiration from cricketer MS Dhoni who also has the same farm on a large scale. हम दो फ्रेंड्स हैं, वे आर एक्चुअली इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट्स, तो वे स्टार्टेड ऑफ, वे थॉट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग अ वेंचर, जॉइंट वेंचर टुगेदर, सो वे स्टार्टेड दिस पोल्ट्री इंडस्ट्री, हुज नेम इज द रॉयल फेडर्स, एंड अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट भी मतलब बढ़ रही है, एंड बिसाइड्स जो मतलब ट्रेडिशनल चीज the youth are actually going away from those things. So we thought of like starting it as, as a side and inshallah. Kadaknath meat and blood are consumed by people with chronic diseases and disorders like anemia. The duo believes chicken farming is one of the best solutions to control unemployment and also to fulfill the demand of white meat lovers in the valley. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. 
breaking news and views from India.